What's up? What's up, everybody? It's it's us. We're actually here. We're actually here on a it's, day it's, that. Who is it? <laughs> who is it? Yeah. Hey, the topic part. There, there. The topic part is right. So we're doing a bonus edition of Value Town, given that we just did our show yesterday, and of course, Blizzard decides to have a humongous announcement. The you know a few whatever twelve hours after our show, and we can't wait six days to talk about this so i figured i'd grab firebat grab noxious and just throw together just a super quick bonus edition of valley town so welcome guys welcome noxious and firebat how you guys doing i'm doing good man just a long day of for honoring and then i hear <laughs> turns out we're we're getting something cool in hearthstone so yeah pretty good day news in hearthstone is just always rare so i'll take it <laughs> yeah it seems like it only comes uh, once a year or so, really. Yeah. News in Hearthstone. <laughs> once a Short year. waves of, of changes. Like, you well, don't expect yeah. them. And it's like all at once. Here's a change. Now, here's a new change. Like, what? Within three days, you've exhausted all your social capital. Like, now you're fucked. Like, you need to follow <laughs> up with something. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. I'm exaggerating. Um, yeah, yeah. Cap- like new news on on you know the long term yeah. plans they have for Hearthstone. Yeah, Hearthstone. definitely. They're on top of just your you know standard uh, changes on on this this new reset that we're about to have. Um, there's there's some additional news as to what their re- um, actual releases are going to be like, or the you know they're going to change up how uh, their normal expansion adventure expansion is going to be. But before before we dive into it, why don't we just like show the the post here and then we start can start talking about it. Uh, so yeah, so they announced Year of the Mammoth proportions, <laughs> which is interesting. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they've tried to pun us. Yes, they've definitely tried to pun us here. And of course, we just finished the Year of the Kraken. So uh, they kind of start off, you know, telling us a few things that we already know: Black Rock Mar- Mountain, TGT, League of Explorers. They're all going to be exclusive to Wild now. Uh, but then they follow up with uh, some talk about. Uh, I guess how they're going to be releasing, uh, d- doing the three releases this year, which, um, you know, in the past we used to do one big expansion in the very beginning, at least last year. We did one big expansion, then we did um, Karazhan in the in the summertime, which was the adventure, and then we finished it off with Gadgetzan. So, so expansion, yep. adventure, expansion. And now it sounds like we're going to be doing three 130-card expansions which is substantially more cards. You know, it's like probably a, almost a third more cards because of that. Uh, maybe not third, maybe like 25% more cards. Well, it's a huge amount. If yeah, you consider the fact that usually adventures are kind of like the scope of them is much smaller. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's good. There's been like one positive adventure and that was uh, <laughs> League of Explorers. And like every other adventure has just been a total flop. It didn't influence the game enough. And all of the competitive players or anyone rank five and above has been like, yeah, I'm just playing the same game still. What what, what was this? Exactly. So. so we have like literally, I mean, how many months is it? It's probably like seven, eight months of the meta being pretty stagnant or yeah, at least yeah. maybe a deck would come in, a deck would come out, but the top tier decks, Shaman in particular, was were basically there the entire time. So 130 right in the middle, I think will be you know, at least give it a chance to change things up. I think the the biggest uh, the biggest factor there is really like it's got to do with the fact that when they make expansions like adventures, what they mm-hmm. try to do is take a few archetypes right now that exist and give them new tools. Let's say like Bees Druid. Okay, let's sprinkle in something new in Karazhan for Bees Druid or a mm-hmm. Menagerie type thing, where when you like with Menagerie Warden when when they do a big adventure, like a big expansion that is not an adventure, they really have like this central theme that they go off of and they create an entire set of cars that revolve around that theme. So like, you know, tri-class stuff um, that we had and then we had uh, in the previous expansion as well, uh, the the old gods. So everything's kind of woven in together, whereas in adventures, it's like, here's a mishmash of stuff. Good luck. Right. uh, (laughs) Right. not, Not very coherent. Yeah. And so, I don't know, overall, what do you got? I mean, of course, this is better than what we currently have, just because there's more cards. Um, so I guess the question is, is this enough? Lots of us have been asking for more frequency of releases, even smaller ones, right? Not necessarily even 130 card ones, which are, you know, awesome too. But um, what do you guys think of the frequency? Just still staying at three. And 
Uh, By the way, what they talked about with the adventures, you know, when, what were they going to do with the adventures? They're basically going to combine the adventures into the expansions and have like a single player option too, which is, I mean, that makes sense too. But I like um, it. yeah, so overall, it's still three. We still only have three releases the entire year. So yeah. in a way, it's still a lot invested in each one. So if they have one that's off, then, you know, they can't really do much, you know, between that and the next expansion. So yeah, what do you guys think? Like Firebat. I'm happy with the amount of releases. One thing I'm not happy with, and it wasn't really addressed at all, is the amount of balance updates that are going to happen. Like, mm -hmm. they've shown time and time and time again that they don't get the balance 100% right on the first try. Yeah. Which yeah. isn't surprising. It's not yeah. really, it's really hard to do that. No game ever gets the balance right on the first try. But <laughs> yeah. what every game does is they patch it when they realize, you know what, it's not perfectly balanced. But what Hearthstone does, they refuse to patch it until they have a year's worth of data and people actually start quitting. That's when they start patching it. And I think that's too slow. I think they need to update, like the content's fine. If we release content too fast, that's gonna deter new players. That's gonna deter people from getting into the game. The price point for how much packs currently cost, it's already like $600 a year if you wanna play our stuff. It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. So more cards than that starts getting crazy unless they lower the cost of cards. But one thing that they can do to recycle mm -hmm. the same content so that they don't have to create a bunch of new content so that they don't have to like make people pay a bunch of extra money, but they can still keep the game fresh. Yeah. Just change a couple things, change some balance things. You know, if like Hunter really sucks, mm -hmm. like it does now with under 2% of the population playing Hunter, <laughs> then uh, maybe, you know, at the end of the month, bump a few cards up, make them a little bit better. You know, spice the game up with just one or two little balance changes every month. I think something like that could go a really long way and it would be very minimal effort on their side. And you know what? If it doesn't work, well, fix it next month. Fix it like, again. Yeah. you just have yeah. changes every month. Like, it's okay to admit you're wrong and constantly make changes. It doesn't okay. need to be perfectly balanced. Okay, People so you want a fresh game. That's what's fun. They don't care if it's perfectly balanced. They just want fresh and new. Right. Just something changing, or you know, and th like you said, if you make a mistake, you can just change again next month, and that'd be nice. Yeah. So you're going, you're asking for a month frequency, which is, yeah, oh, that'd yeah. be pretty amazing. That, that's what I would ask for too. I think, yeah. like to me, that is the pace that, like, yeah. it's it's not obsessive because I was thinking, you know, two weeks, like for a very competitive game, two weeks is fine. Like League of Legends, for instance, but we're talking about a, like a game we want to be more casual. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we have to deploy a patch to multiple platforms. Then we're talking maybe a month makes more sense. Mm -hmm. And in that way, I don't know. Like, I feel like I can stomach a few weeks of the same stuff. But, you know, <laughs> let's say eight, eight weeks gets long. Eight weeks is long. And mm -hmm. since we wait 12 weeks between releases, um, 16 weeks between releases, that is. It's really, really old. And if you look at it that way, right, now there's not going to be the whole month gating, right? Like the, the second mm -hmm. expansion in the middle of the year is not an adventure, so there's no first week, second week, third week, fourth week. It's all at once. So that means that effectively, yes, we get more cards, but we also exhaust it quicker because within the first week, you know, we've done a ton of experimentation. We're like, okay, here are here's the current meta game. So already one week in the release, we're thinking about the state of the meta. Yeah. Uh, whereas with Gedetan or uh, with Karazhan, that is, we were like, okay, what's all of this going to look like once everything is out? And it took a little bit of time for everything to settle down after the, the entire month. So I think not having patches would ruin uh, the, the fix that this is trying to implement. Like, I think this is trying to address an issue that is not going to be solved unless more patches come in. Yeah. Not the part time. <laughs> That's what I thought you meant at first. And I was like, what? No, 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 no. What Fuck do you that. mean by that? Uh, no, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Another positive to like having any sort of monthly updates is the ladder resets monthly. Oh, yeah. If I just grinded all the way to Legend in one metagame, what incentive do I have to do it again the next month with the same cards in the same metagame? It's the same thing. It's repetitive. It feels awful. Mm -hmm. But if there's some, even just a little bit of changes, then it doesn't feel as grindy because you're not doing the exact same thing over it again. There's a slight difference to it. That's a very good point, actually. I never really looked at it that way, but the timing is perfect for, like, just to break the staleness once more. Oh, yeah. Right? You're giving, like, a new level. Because if you change things mid-season, it fucking sucks for the competitive players. Mm -hmm. and they're like, okay, I'm at the top of the legend. Now, what's that meta shift? Guy comes in with, like, a stupid fucking card that makes no sense because it was changed, and suddenly your rank drops down and yeah. you haven't been, uh, you know, practicing in that environment. Yeah, I, th I think a month, like all those things I think you said were, were really good, both of you guys. Uh, also, I think that they should have a good feel, especially after Gadget Zan, you know, how quickly things started to be figured out, how, I mean, not every single aspect of the, the metagame was, you know, 
completely stabilized after a month. But a lot of it was, you know what I mean? Like a lot of the yeah, main sure. fixtures were in place and maybe there's some variances, you know, a couple cards here, a couple cards there. But for the most part, it was there and it was after a month, after a full release. So for me, it, it does point to, you know, having four months between releases, just still way too many. And my first thought was actually to have maybe the adventures kind of be in between as like pseudo releases well, that would cost more money though so too much content yeah that's the yeah. issue it's like anyone that's not super invested into the game at that point like forget it like mm -hmm. that's so much money they have to spend on cards well, what if it's a no like yeah. what if it's just it's pve adventures adventure. without cards yeah, yeah like yeah it could just right be a pve do, type is there going to release a free adventure with every set uh with the yeah, theme attached if to it, it doesn't have new content then that's that's kind yeah, of then defeats the, the point, point. yeah well, exactly yeah. Yeah, i wanted sure. to I mean, have it's some a lot of change but it's like just a way to sprinkle in some... i mean if they release free cards that would be sweet too like i definitely think free content is a great way to hook new players into the game and get yeah. them spending money i but, think every uh, if you give people like every two weeks like two new cards for instance you could like make hearthstone absolutely fucking amazing like that's yeah, it'd be really to, cool to me sure. yeah two new think... cards every like yeah. Two new cards every two weeks is like, here People are these meta it. fixers. Yeah, here are exactly. these, these patches on the fly that we implemented for the meta. It, it, yeah. Blizzard's never going to do that. They really price gouge people, man. Well, even if they do, like, even if we did this type of thing where it's like an expansion, we have, I don't know whether it's free or it's it's just cheaper than your your average expansion. Maybe oh, that, that's that's when they do the balances too. You know, it gives them an excuse to match up a balance release at the same time as something else because normally their scheduling you know, it seems to have their, their scheduling is totally different yeah like yeah, the, the development team the ladder team like all of the teams <laughs> seem to have completely different calendars and none of them line up we got patches happening mid-tournament all the time yeah. for official blizzard tournaments <laughs> true. none of the That's patches true. ever coincide with ladder resets but you know what? Every other game in the world lines up their balance patches with ladder resets so that people come back and want to play the ladder at the beginning of the season. There's yeah. no reason to want to play the ladder at the beginning of the That's season fair. for Hearthstone because yeah. their schedules just don't coincide with anything. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I feel like on like going back to the point about the the patches not occurring simultaneously, it really leads to a, to a point where people just get tired like uh, to go back to the stainless it actually makes the stainless even more prevalent than it could otherwise be mm -hmm. and yeah. yep. it would be very simple for them to to release content if not like punctually because again i don't know how easy they can patch stuff but they could really have just the the idea of a season pass where oh you know this year if you buy the season pass you get all the cards we give you for you know, every two weeks right yeah like every two weeks you you get two new cards and if you buy it like at the end of the year then you just get retroactively everything that came um that year it's like a bundle for the entire year but the cars come out like very punctually uh, as opposed mm, to being like one mass influx of 130. I, I definitely like the packaging of a year for you know just yeah. pricing something like that i don't know if it's like you get two cards every month type of thing but the concept i like though i think that yeah. would be pretty interesting um yeah, so I, I'm hoping that, you know, this is like the baseline. They set 130, 130, 130. And then hopefully during the year with the balance, they're not like setting anything in stone that they'll be able to maybe sneak some of the balance changes in once it's a little bit easier to make balance changes. <laughs> I'm hoping that's at least what they're thinking about. But um, it's a start. So yeah, I don't, it seems like everything that they do is always a start. They yeah, always start going in the right direction. They've been going in the right direction for years. It's just <laughs> like how much slower could they possibly go in the right direction? Is really like they keep doing great moves. It's just how come these take three years to do? Like, I, uh, so bad, man. <laughs> yeah, like, pick up the pace like a little bit. Like we're we're barely crawling. If we could just get it up to like a, a casual mall walk, like maybe we could get there. <laughs> Like, I'm not even asking for a jog, Whoa. just like one step less than a jog, just like a, a step with a little pep so you get to the clearance rack in time, like that sort of yeah. speed. You, you got a coffee, let's just say you took a coffee in the morning and you're thinking about jogging, but you need a second coffee before you really yeah. get started. Yeah. You need that first coffee. Like that. Oh my god. We don't have the coffee yet, though. Someone's gotta <laughs> light the fire, get the coffee brewing. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's legendary. a great analogy, of coffee brewing guys. garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay yeah, anyways oh, but let's let's um it'll be it'll at least be good to see i mean it's great that they already thought about it because i think we suggested it too like we just yeah. didn't want to see an adventure really that much anymore because it was just so small so it's good that they're replacing it it's good that they're combining it and i mean they're keeping adventure still so that's definitely good um okay let's talk about the cards so this is this is a big thing too which is that they've 
moved some cards to the Hall of Fame, which is this new? This, this wasn't here before, right? Was Hall of no, Fame? Here? Okay, okay. I'm just making sure I didn't year, forget yeah. like last year. But they've created this concept, the Hall of Fame, which of course are all the cards that were moved to Wild, at least from the classic set. And they've added a few more this time. And uh, most notably, or at least right off the bat, Azure Drake, which a lot of people have been talking about Azure Drake recently. We talked about it, I don't know how many weeks in a row now on Value Town, that this is the most prevalent card right now in Hearthstone in the most decks uh, for just value, for card drawing ability, you know, just all those reasons, right? And, and it's been oppressing the five slot for a long time. Like five drops just don't get a chance, even though there's not the best ones, but they don't even get a chance because Azure Drake is just so solid for, for many of the classes. So thoughts, Azure Drake being retired from standard. It's definitely going to hurt mid-range decks. Mm -hmm. that's a, yep. that's it, a, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, one of the, the best tools in mid-range decks. But honestly, Ezra Drake is never, in every class I'd say, except for Rogue and maybe Mage, Ezra Drake isn't a core set of your deck if you have anything better. Like, it's kind of just like that filler because there's nothing else that fits the theme of your deck. Yeah. That's like, why people play Ezra yeah. Drake. Like, if they had better alternatives in Druid, they would cut Ezra Drake. Back in the day with Ancient of Wars, or Ancient of Lores, drawing two and stuff like that, Ezra Drake was seen as, like, a, a zero of or a one of in some metagames. Like, it's definitely, I wouldn't say the best possible five drop in the game, but it is the most flexible. And I think the reason why they're getting rid of it is because of how, like, aware it is, and they want different classes to have a true class identity. And being able to just slot Ezra Drake in there instead of a class-centric card makes it harder to have class identity and they want to like get away from what i'd say like the shredder effect is where you just play this random neutral because it's pretty good well yeah it's, yeah because the same thing as the tri-class cards really right now it's like this card is everywhere so well we we talked about this yesterday noxious what if they just changed the battle cry to not be draw a card but to be something yeah. else of value because well, i think the, the draw the, the card we the had biggest. in mind was like you change it to if you hold a dragon draw a card so it's only a dragon card and otherwise it can be like an ogre magi so okay. you can make it four or five. Somebody suggested like five minute four or five, spell damage plus one, battle cry. If you're holding a dragon, draw a card. So it's just made for dragon decks, and it's otherwise an, a, like an upgrade over magi uh, as a pure spell damage minion. So it's still okay. Uh, yeah, because like losing a spell damage minion does kind of suck too. You know, we don't have well, that many of them either. It really sucks for rogue. Rogue's yeah, getting yeah. team pillager rotated out. Rogue's losing Azur Drake. Small time mm -hmm. buccaneer just got nerfed. Conceal. Rogue's losing conceal. <laughs> yeah, You'll see later on in the I list. Saw, I don't I know what rogue people. does anymore. Honestly, rogue's rogue just it's the new hunter. That's what's gonna happen. Like, I think rogue, like uh, rogue uh, rogue had this thing where it's like this stealth fucking plane that drops bombs on people because every single time it's hit with nerfs. Like, it doesn't give a shit if it's going at Mac 20 or Mac 11. It still goes, like, <laughs> above the speed of sound, and it still draws bombs on your head every fucking set. Like, it just finds a way. And at, at, as time passes, they'll eventually, uh, you know, I think this might, this might be like, the rotation. Identity, though? I know, see, that's, right, so that's, that's, this, is, this has been, yeah. Originally, Rogue's it's Identity was making big weapons and blade flurrying them. Yeah. And then they killed blade flurry. And then Rogue's Identity became concealing Edwin and questing adventures and setting up weird lethals with Conceal. Then they get rid of Conceal. And then it was like Tomb Pillager stuff, I guess, at, at one point. And you were able to draw a bunch of coins, yeah. and that was cool. Now Tomb Pillager's gone. Like, what does Rogue do? Just like, draw cards, you burgle. Just draw cards. Burgle? <laughs> See, dude, here it is. I, I'm Rogue, gonna... just the only Rogue Identity now? Is there, Are they really trying to go full meme with it? So here, here we go. I'm going to make this card. I'm going to call him uh, Trade Prince um, <laughs> something. Right? Trade, Trade Prince something. It's an Ethereal guy. So it's like an Ethereal peddler. When you play him, you deal four damage to the enemy hero for each non, non rogue card you have in your hand. Well, they're never going to let that work. That's, that's a combo deck. They're, they're going to nerf that into the ground. That's. Are you, are you seen the other cards oh, they're getting rid of? They don't want combo decks to exist. They want, yeah. they want the game to be played in only one dimension. They didn't like the fact that early on in Hearthstone you could play either an aggro deck, a mid-range deck, a combo deck, or a control deck and had four dimensions to the game. They want you to play mid-range onboard trade decks and that's it. They don't want any well, other way that you can play the game to exist. Let's point out one big thing about Rogue. Well, okay, well, first thing about Rogue. At least they didn't change Auctioneer, okay? If they would, if Auctioneer gets they to did. ever oh, change... They did. It's, they, they killed it. But they killed it. It costs six now. Oh, yeah. Did I miss that? 
Oh, no, you so, mean, you, you, oh, you mean before, you mean with, before. Without you mean before. Them, without Tomb Pillager, what True. are you doing with gadgets? I know, but at least they didn't change the drawing aspect of it. They can no, still draw, at least no, to, to an extent. So, it, it, it has no support yeah. anymore. The only, the only reason it was still played at 6 was because Conceal was a thing. Well, yeah, because true, at least you true. could start the following that. turn, yeah. you could fall, you start the following turn with, like, full man account and do something yeah, retarded. Yeah. But Wait, if you're starting at 6, and you have to use Master of Disguise to stealth it at 10, like, you never get, you're never getting there. Like, yeah, that's they my need, point. One of the things that they really need to do is if they're taking out Azur Drake, which is the most common card in mid range decks, and we can see if we scroll down that they're not really taking anything away from aggro decks, yeah. they need to have some sort of replacement in the new set for these this mid range slot. Like, this is a big hole Ooh. to fill. And if it's not replaced appropriately, then mid range decks aren't going to be very good. Well, I mean, I think it's like it's mid range decks and. It, you, I, I generalize it even more, and this is kind of the point I was getting at. I would like I was just joking with the auctioneer part, actually. But the the biggest thing about rogue, rogue, and even priest is, or even just any of the classes that are, that are super weak after standard resets, are the ones that don't have super viable class minions. You know, and we're sure. losing the like one of the only ones. I mean, we still have SI agent, of course. We always have that, and and you know, Van Cleef is still being played, of course. But oh, losing yeah. Pillager is huge, right? It's mm -hmm. it really hurts a big deal. And you know, like with priests, we're losing you know just the dragons, and we're losing you know they just don't really have that great of just uh, fun, just foundational uh, minions to really build off of. And it's going to happen every single year, like literally every single year until they start adding like solid cards or at least removing all the solid cards from the other classes, you know, and having the, the classes be able to start on a baseline. Uh, so this is a problematic, this is very endemic. This is going to keep continue happening until they, th they fix that. And rogue yeah. is going to be very, very apparent and priest. Both of these are going to be super apparent after the reset, unless these first 130 cards are I mean, phenomenal for, I'll say for something classes. about rogue. I think the identity that they're pushing for all the memery uh, is stealth. You know, like yeah, for the, sure. The whole the tempo, the, the five stealth. drop assassin, mm -hmm. the shaku. Uh, uh, my argument the to the tempo stealth, stealth deck, like they have the the stealth houndmaster guy. They have all yeah, these yeah, conceal right. minions. Right. They got the guy that reconceals if you trade. Mm -hmm. Why do we need another tempo deck? Yeah, I was like, gonna say that's, like, that's the most why? boring way you could yeah. build. Yeah, we class. we already have like four or five other classes. You know, shaman's been a great tempo <laughs> deck. You know, like, yeah. there, there's so many other classes that already do the tempo play style. We have yeah. nine classes, and I want to see, you know, at I least mean, five different play I'll, styles among the nine yeah. classes. I'll say something, though. Like, the, the play styles don't bother me as much because I look at something like Shadowverse, right? I don't know if you've yeah. played much of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've played like, a lot of Shadowverse. You can, yeah, you can play a tempo deck in every fucking faction, and it's like, they play differently. Like, they're not the same because you're managing different resources at every point, whereas yeah. in Hearthstone, when you play a tempo deck across the board, it's always the same. Exactly the same, play. yeah. There's no, there's no, like, class-specific mechanic. You mm -hmm. know, they tried to make, like, ramp a druid thing. They tried to make... Uh, combo or rogue thing, but the truth is they haven't expanded on that theme hard enough in each class to where mm -hmm. your rogue deck is a deck filled with combos. You know, Ooh. it's not like every card is a combo card and they streak off of each other and they reduce their cost based on the amount of combo cards you play. It's like, there's this one Edwin and fuck it. Like, that's it's too little. <laughs> yeah, into, yeah. Yeah, well, the, the, yeah, but the problem with Shadowverse that I found, because I got, I got to the point where I was starting to play Shadowverse at like a pretty high level. Like, <laughs> me yeah. and Frodan got into, like, a, a bet, and we were, like, battling against each other, and after a week, who could win? And it was, like, a $5 bet, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of like, <laughs> it, you know, it, it, we take it very seriously. So anyway, we got into, like, pretty deep into it, and we were getting the points where, like, on ladder, we would have, like, 99.9% .9 win rate at the yeah. highest rank on ladder. Yeah, like, exactly. like, so... The problem with that game was, like, if the player base was as big as Hearthstone, they would figure out some really broken stuff. So when things synergize that much, it's oftentimes ways that you can get decks where if you draw the correct order, you win 100% of the time. That's, that's so it Shadow causes, in like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shadow yeah. in a nutshell, if yeah, at the yeah. high level, like, your deck wins by, like, turn three or four if you draw in the correct order. Like, right. you set it up right. Like, you get in Daria, well, well, the, so, so getting back, you know, to the Rogue with a combo, I don't... So we're talking about identity, kind of getting back to that. Just what is yeah. the identity? And, you know, the, the things that I can point out right now are the stealth thing that you talked about. Combo, which has always been the original one. I I'm, I'm don't really love it because they val they keep valuing the the, the benefits of the combo in yeah. inaccurate, just bad ways. Like, it's never worth enough. And then I would say that value is actually a big one, which is like 
you know, Shadowcaster and and Raptor and things like that. It's like, what are we supposed to do with that? Like in the Rogue yeah. deck, why are those cards even in there if we we have no way of even staying alive long I mean, enough to I'll use those? No heal, way. no taunt, but yeah. nine drops that are eight for And stealing too, Burgle. Value. Yeah, Burgle stuff. I it's mean, like, what does Burgle do for me? I lose tempo like every time I, I play these cards. So yeah, prep. prep. <laughs> yeah, prep. I mean, if you think Rogue's designed in a way that's unsustainable, just take a look at, uh, at how Hunter's designed for a minute. That's and you, your, last your mind will explode. Like, <laughs> you can't it backstab, functionally you know. cannot work on paper. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you said, they could no, there's no way they thought this would be good. Like, no yeah, way. <laughs> you just can't. Like, I tried for like 20 yeah. minutes to figure out a way that they could have possibly thought that it could have looked good. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I think you have to mix in Power Shot. If Power Shot is actually the saving yeah. grace of Hunter, and it's I not played good Power right Shots, now. man. Still not enough, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, not enough. But I'm Even saying, if, like, it, if Power Shot dealt three, like maybe, sure. yeah. like, and then if you drop Power Shot, you could maybe win the game, like sort of mm -hmm. scenarios. Like we'll be that. better you after the pirate stuff is like gone. It, you know? so if the pirate stuff goes down, then you're opening hand, and then you're good to go. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, which is a great way that they do the design for almost all the classes right now, as far as the removal is concerned. Yeah. Okay, well, that's Azure Drake. <laughs> so let's, <laughs> let's move on to the next one, which is, man, Sylvanas. I mean, they're 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 retiring some of the long-standing uh, legends that have been mm -hmm. the most popular and the highest value cards. And Sylvanas is definitely one of those. Uh, probably, would you say the best Death Rattle card in the game? Like high main, probably. Be, well, I mean, it, it depends. depends it's Tyrion I mean, all the or Death Rattles are situational, right? Yeah, right. I guess that's true. But now I would say this is has been very versatile over the time. And obviously it's a neutral card too, so it's been used the most too. So um kind of sad to see it go to be honest because it's always been one of my favorite, but you know what? Like we need to get some <laughs> new cards in here and if that means retiring even some of our favorite ones then so be it. What do you guys think? Um I don't like Sylvanas. I've never liked her and I wish she'd never existed. Really? Was, wow. Okay. Yeah, I hated her in the early stages of beta and I hated her on release. Um she was 5 mana, she was broken at 6, she was still annoying cuz when she worked she was fucking ridiculous. Uh, people don't <laughs> mind her because they say, "Oh, it's controlled RNG," but to me it's just an extra layer of frustration cuz it's either going to be a twisting nether on her own. Or she's going to create a game swing that doesn't need to happen. I'd rather just not have her in the game. That's really? my thought. Wow. I, I don't like it. I never felt that I like way. but a lot. Yeah, me too. I'm <laughs> definitely in the same boat as you. It, just, it does well. I don't like the design I, of it. I think it's a really cool card for like every control deck that gives them a lot more tools and flexibility. And it's it, just like Ezra Drake. That, uh, these cards that are getting removed definitely leave holes in decks that are already not tier one. So all of these cards that we're cutting... <laughs> yeah. Do not affect any of the tier one decks. Control they affect all right two now. decks. Yeah. Yeah. All so control these tier decks. two decks that are almost good enough, the control decks that just can't quite beat the aggro yet, but uh, are getting close to being able to beat the aggro, are all getting silently nerfed here, unless they're getting, you know, better replacements in the future. So my fear is we've had an aggro metagame in every single metagame of Hearthstone that's ever been stabilized. Like, yeah, sure, we've had control meta games, but they've been for like the two weeks right after a set when people haven't figured things out yet. Mm -hmm. And then they refine the aggro decks and then it's an aggro meta game. Now, with all of these changes, they hurt the mid range decks and they hurt the control decks, and none of them touch the aggro decks. And uh, <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. I, I hear you, man. I totally yeah, the, the hear you. The replacements are not going to be good enough because Sylvanas is freaking good. And it's hard to well, find a replacement that's going to be that good. I mean, we Especially could call Jade. It, we could make like Jackson's Runt, and it's like a six mana four <laughs> six that gives you fifteen health if you have only like yeah, Highlander like... garbage. And then, but you're allowed <laughs> to play two of him, right? Because it doesn't matter when you draw the first one; the other one's in your deck, so only one copy left. <laughs> you need to see. I wouldn't be surprised. There's a death rattle that actually does give you health. In well, this I, I do think it's it's right. good to get some of these staples out of the way. You know, like Ezra Drake's the most played card in the game, and then Sylvanas yeah. gets yeah. played a lot as well. So, you know, they've been staples. I, I like keeping it fresh. If you don't like get rid of Sylvanas, it's probably going to continue to get played for basically forever. Forever. So yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's the thing. Like one one of the things this card does too is it cheapens mind control, makes it look like trash, which it kind of is in many aspects. And it makes Cabal Shadow Priest feel like a piece of shit too in some cases. Like, and it's not that Cabal Shadow Priest is worse, is that if I have the choice between Sylv and Cabal, I'm oftentimes going to play Sylv. They're not filling the same oh. purpose, but this one is more flexible uh, in general. So it really depends which meta you're up against, where Cabal is, you know, potentially strictly better. But I don't know. I'm not, 
There's it, not a lot of metagames where Cabal's good anymore. Exactly. <laughs> right. That's, that's yeah, my point. Exactly. Things, are, things have three attack now. They're going to need to change that thing to three yeah, attack. steal three. Exactly. Like, what, what are you stealing? Like a wisp? Like, there's it, not Totems many games that's got Totems. two anymore. They, they have, get you. Yeah. Well, that's my point. Like, Sylvanas really makes those cards feel even worse. So if they ever want to design... Well, even with Sylvanas yeah. in the deck over Cabal Shadow Priest, you're playing Priest, you're playing a tier three deck, you're still losing. So, you're still dead. Yeah, you're still dead. Like, I, that's the scary <laughs> part, is all of these, you know rotations are taking out some of the best cards in the tier two and three decks and leaving all of the good cards in the tier one decks well, yeah, and it's just pre furthering the gap unless they print things even better than sylvanas for the control decks which they gotta print some freaking good cards so. i know like it, it's kind of crazy and we're gonna go and get scared. to the rest of the we're gonna get to the rest of these and yes you will notice that the theme is all of these cards go in control decks which yeah. is just unbelievable <laughs> to some extent because there were barely even enough to even put in there at this time and then next up we've got ragnaros which has always been a favorite of control decks as well as tempo decks too just a finisher i mean just historically and i still see it sometimes even now so uh, this has been a staple of Hearthstone, a like competitive Hearthstone, I think, forever now, too. I am so glad to see this card. <laughs> I think there's if, a if lot of people. If you look back at the World <laughs> Championship, yeah. there was about four or five games in the World Championship yeah. completely decided on Ragnaros 50-50s in the World Championship, just a literal flip of a coin. So this is a card that really needed to go for a long time. It's just got so much potential upside that you kind of have to play it. Because when it works out, you win the game. And when it doesn't work out, you're not necessarily in a losing position. And it allows you to win games that you have no business winning whatsoever, which is kind of bullcrap. You just get to cheese out a win out of nowhere, which uh, I don't like happening. No one like really feels satisfied when they're like totally dominating a game yeah. and then someone just plays rag and you got six minions in the field that just snipes you over the top and you lose. Like That's a horrible feeling. Yeah, so I'll say this about Rag. Back when the beta was around, I said this card was toxic. Dr. Boom came out, and everybody forgot about Rag. <laughs> but it's true, it's true. Yeah. People forgot about Rag, but... And then when Dr. Boom went away, people were like, Oh, this game is great now, great again. I'm like, nope, it's not. Yeah, this this fucking card's toxic. coming back, and it's won way too many games uh, to be, I don't know, <laughs> at competitive levels. And I don't even play competitively, so I'm just watching this as an observer, and it's fucking hilarious to watch. People get excited for it because it kind of triggers me. Like whenever Rag is like the guy plays Rag, hits face, doesn't matter. Or the guy plays Rag, snipes the Rag, I flip a shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, that's you know the what? worst. Yeah. Like yeah. this is ridiculous. It feels really bad from the competitive side of things. And yeah, Rag beats out all of the class legendaries in every yep. deck. Like every control deck cuts their class legendary and plays Rag. So well, where is the class definition mm -hmm. here? We need the classes to actually separate from each other but yeah. uh, your big cool class legendary like antonitis or whatever a lot of the times you know you just shove it out and jam in a ragnaros like temple mage for the longest time unless they're going a greedy build don't even run antonitis they just run, I, run rag i'll have to say i'll say one thing right like, about you're just losing rag and just generally speaking now you're mentioning class legends we need some better, like, high-end legend cards, oh, yeah. man. They're like, pretty garbage. I, yeah. I brought this up like, maybe like a month ago in Valley Town. It's like, I want to build a greedy deck. I want to build the greediest freaking um, priest deck I can build possible. And it's like, I have the hardest time finding stuff that is, like, so immensely a, greedy. They didn't it's, really balance them very well. They, they didn't. Like, if you That's compare, like, Azerdrake as a 9-drop compared to all the other 9-drops in the game, if you play Azerdrake, not only does it have the ability, so the potential value of being played earlier on, then when you play it on turn 9, you have 4 mana left over, so you can play <laughs> a 5-mana 4-4, which draws a card, so essentially recycling itself. So it doesn't take the cost of two cards, and then play a four drop on top of that. So let's say you've just played an Azure Drake and a Chillwind Yeti. You've now played, you know, an eight nine for nine mana, and it's only costed you one card, and you had the flexibility of not having to run a big drop because right. the big drops not having the flexibility to come out earlier on is super super impactful on the cost of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like, I feel like the I'm gonna go back to Shadowverse. I keep doing that, but like the big <laughs> drops in that game are fucking huge. Like, oh, they kill you every time. Yeah, if, the <laughs> if they come out, you're dead. The is, yeah, if the if the mana cost of the card is high in that game, you actually get a reward that scales because yeah. Hearthstone initially, I think what they tried to do, if you notice, like in the very early stages, was tone down the power of early drops, and then they reverted that. Leprechaun became a two one, and then they went Undertaker on us. But for a while, it was like, let's make those mid-range control decks better, you know, in general. And uh, mm -hmm. the, the trend then turned around, and now we're stuck in this limbo where the initial design ideas of making longer games happen 
is shifted and suddenly those big drops are not statted properly they have very little swing potential uh they're very weak to soft removal uh, to hard removal and soft removal still so it's, it's one of these things where the, the the late game cards have never been good and you know i was Particularly the class about was. <laughs> four reaper like four reaper was such a cool card Dude, i love and, that card <laughs> right but the point is this guy at eight mana had a decent stat line at six nine if it triggered the issue is it doesn't get to do anything like it just mm. never hits it never swings and never and the discrepancy between eight and nine is actually a world apart yeah but it the is stats on, the, on the cards is not even remotely adjusting for that so a nine and an eight have similar stat lines which is nonsense because they just cost so much more yeah and i, I feel yeah. like the class legendaries just have been i mean we have so we have like classes that have the worst legendary <laughs> cards and yeah, it it's surprisingly sh it's shown in a bit as well you know like how the the power of some of these these classes are i think outside of maybe shaman you know with yeah, you know nobody uses alkir anymore it, it, it is a sick one but no, people don't even use it because it's so damn oh, yeah. good you know already but look at look at hunter i mean we got well hunter Dr had call of the wild which i, I i'm gonna go out call of the wild's here. not a legend though <laughs> Hey, it kind of was, but like I'm gonna go out. I think I'm in the minority here, but I liked Call of the Wild at eight. I think if Call of the Wild cost eight, that would be better for Hunter right now. That's a class defining power card. Yeah, that creates a more unique sense of gameplay. At this point, yeah, with a, especially with a lot of the removal that's oh, available with, with now, the way the games yeah. went, especially now, like Call of the Wild got nerfed by itself basically by how fast the meta game got. But yeah. like I think that's cool. I think mm -hmm. classes should have some card that defines them or it's something. A couple cards that define them, you know, that are cool late game drops for the control decks of that class, yeah. instead of all of the control decks playing Ragnaros at the top end. I think that's lame. I want to have different control decks that have different cool things that are class oriented. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because they literally, I don't know if it was in their plans to kill off Hunter, but knowing that, I don't think that nerf should have occurred, like going back on yeah. it. And that the nerf, Hunter's Mark nerf doesn't make sense with how make badly. Sense either. Well, what's funny? Well, what's funny they about the Call of the Wild one was that n none of us were like rioting about Call of the Wild. No, no, people. Yeah, there's people, a few people. There's people a few no, I mean, people. Game really, I mean, people were. So are some people complaining, but not. It wasn't like, oh, they have to change this like right yeah. now, like like we're no. seeing with you know In, small time uh, Buccaneer and stuff. Batstone. Mm -hmm. Call of the Wild, I think, was the fifth most voted for card to get banned when I did R Batstone. Wow. With the okay. Cards. That says a lot. So it was up there, but yeah, I mean, like, uh, not too many people are complaining that much. And it, one thing that they've done with a lot of the card nerfs is it feels like the card nerfs and the card development is done by two separate groups of people because they've very oftentimes released or nerfed a card and then released cards that countered to it. Yeah. So I'll talk about like Gadgets and Auctioneer, for example. The set they nerfed Gadgets and Auctioneer, they released Bomb Lobber, Lobber which yeah. killed Gadgets and <laughs> Auctioneer. True. Like that's it, it was a it costed five Gadgets and costed five, and it throws a bomb which deals four damage, killing it. So they released, they nerfed and released Counterplay in the same yeah, exact set. That's a good set. point. And I they thought about they that. continue and to do that on. every single set. So it feels like hmm. the people that nerf cards are a hundred percent different group than the people that design new cards. Yeah, and they need to get I, on the same page or something because i remember we can't uh, nerf that's and release counterplay because that just really kills the class i have to wonder how much of that came from because uh, i remember the time where like undertaker was dominating and somebody probably had the idea of hey let's we have gvg already mapped out let's sprinkle in scarred purifier and whatever the fuck else uh little exorcist and like these guys didn't I feel like there was no communication as far as the actual power level of the card as it was being played and what was needed to counter it, uh, or if a nerf was needed. And then they released the set, and then what ended up happening is they eventually nerfed the Undertaker. Um, I, I just don't understand how the like the overlap isn't occurring between the the nerfs and the yeah, I like the actual gameplay. I think yeah, I think you might have something. I mean, they do really meet. Weird. I mean, they they definitely have meetings together. So. I don't know. Maybe from a standpoint of uh, strategic wise, or uh, you know, maybe they're not talking. But you are right on the mark with some of those those nerfs and, and new releases because it doesn't make sense sometimes. And you and when they double up on it, you're you're totally right. It just kills yeah, a class. Just nuke a class. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, I think Hunter would be. I mean, I don't still don't think Hunter would be super oh, be powerful still, yeah sure. maybe yeah. after the pirates i don't know maybe there will be a minor adjustment but I with the pirates it would have be still been druid like they might be able to beat druid i don't know they've maybe always they, been uh, able to be druid you know it's they like can't if be they druid can't, right now though it's crazy yeah that just doesn't seem right man yeah. what is this 
<laughs> okay, well, let's move on. We got power overwhelming now, which, you know, uh, Reno Locks will not have that ability to combo anymore, uh, which yeah. was one of the big power options, at least when you're building the deck, to get it, you know, be able to tech in there or not. Uh, and this card, again, has been very, a big part of both, I would say, ag aggro decks. Uh, it's probably every single type of archetype, yeah. actually, of, of Warlock. It's in all the Warlock decks. It's for yeah. sure one of the most powerful Warlock cards, and it's got to be one of the most powerful cards in the game. It, yeah, it's really, far. really strong, and in Reno Lock, it's oftentimes played even without the Leroy Faceless combo because it activates mm -hmm. Shadow Flame, it activates Shambler, and so you're able to get some uh, pretty cute combos off. And... Uh, I'm kind seeing of... it go, yeah. It uh, also like destroys a lot of the combo lock archetypes. So there's another combo deck that's going to be butchered. So we've had freeze mage get butchered. We've had like combo rogues get butchered. We're gonna have combo warlock get butchered now. They do not want you to play combo decks. Blizzard's got something against combo decks. I don't know what it is. We just talked they, about that too. They really don't want to want you dying from 30. It's super yeah. important for them to have that. I mean, I'll, I'll say something though about PO. What irritated me about the card is how it fits everywhere, I guess. Like, I don't it mind combo good, cards yeah. that are specific, right? Like, that's... Mm -hmm. cause the thing with PO is that it makes charge minions good for combo decks. It makes trading up with aggro decks very, very good. It makes a finisher in every yeah. fucking thing it's, ever. It triggers net rattles. It does everything, so... Yeah, yeah. It, it is busted, uh, but... Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's... I I think it, I, I think it, it could have been adjusted. It didn't have to be yeah, four I, four. I thought four I, four was honestly, a lot, but I think like back when they made the Doomhammer nerf, I actually called for a powerwhelming nerf to three three, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed okay. to four four, and that would like leave Shadow Flame value up. It would make combo plays a little bit less, you know, intense, uh, and it would still enable trade ups. And except you can't get a two attack minion to kill a Judah the Claw, right? Like it's just on the cusp of. Uh, kind of breaking the the threshold of how high you can really trade up with the card. Whereas now that it's being rotated out, what they're saying is if you want to play a degenerate fucking deck, go to Wild Man. And I actually like that they're letting us keep those cards in a way, because they said they mm. wanted to support Wild a bit more. And I, you know, Molten Giant, worst disaster ever. Now the card's dead in both formats. Move it to yeah, Wild, you true. can play Headlock. Like it's fucking great. Yeah, yeah, yeah that so, would have been sick if they preserved Molten Giant for Wild. Yeah. Yeah, this is that's kind of how I look at this that, kind of change. I like that, it. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'll, me. I'll just like at least give a, a one point for being a little sad that Power Overwhelming is going in. It's it is one of those cards where you can make plays. You know, like one thing oh, I think it's cool. missing from Hearthstone right now are play making cards. You know, oh. nothing that's just like oh you just play it, you just play it, and it just is good. You know, and you know maybe well, you're trying. Ex that's what they, they've said time I know, and time again. Onboard interactions. They want cards that you play, and they're just good. <laughs> Chill when Yeti's so... all around, guys. That's yeah. So... I'm sad. That I'm sad about power. You know, you know the old mm. days of power overwhelming and void tearing, and you know those days are yeah. all just gone now. You know, it's like it's 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 that a bit was sad. Warlock. That's that's a to me anyway. Power overwhelming is a big part of Warlock because it does allow you to do all of like Sylvanas PO exactly like a super classic. Right? You know, control Warlock power play, power overwhelming Shadow Flame, power overwhelming Shambler, power overwhelming Void Terror with like the Ruby and Egg and stuff like that. It was a super classic Zoo play. So there. It's definitely one of the more classifying Warlock cards that they could have possibly removed, in my opinion. Yeah, somebody yeah. in the chat says that Brode on Reddit said that they're considering unnerfing Molten Giant, which, if true, <laughs> is fucking <laughs> awesome. They, wow. They're not going to do that. They're never going to admit that they're wrong. Yeah, but Brode said they're considering unnerfing the nerf because and moving him to wild if he's actually... Oh, I mean, that would be a very smart decision. I think I that'd like... be awesome. Like, preserving yeah. Handlock, that's insane. That would be... Very terrific for the game. That's a, a deck that people fell in love with and would love to be able to continue playing in wild. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, true. I think that I'd like to see that. That'd be fantastic. Actually. Yeah. I think that would I, be cool. I think the fact that wild exists as a people look at it as like, oh, there's the dumpster of Hearthstone where they don't know what to do. <laughs> the truth is, like, you like it's a deck, nostalgia, but it doesn't yeah. mean it's not oppressive. It is nostalgia. It's really yeah. sometimes, it's an easy way to fix problems without deleting cars. Like, it's so frustrating to, to simply Honestly, have nothing. Honestly, I would have loved if, um, 
it, it, there's like a, even like a wilder wild mode where you can just play yeah. unnerfed variations of cards. Old school fucking like, yeah, just yeah. the nostalgia mode or something like that where like you have every version like if you <laughs> play historical. during beta you just have the unnerfed beta variations that you can play in nostalgia it's like, mode. It's like playing like an, an NBA 2K game it's like I want to play with the 1994 Bulls versus yeah, exactly. like, the, like the decks like right now. That'd be awesome. I would go in that mode with my friends you know yeah. and just be like you know people I played with in the beta and just jam some old beta stone sometimes just give me my hunter man just give me my hunter back and i'm I'm all for that that'd be awesome squeak squawk into unleash (laughs) yes squeak squawk into unleash hell yeah dude all right uh moving on we got uh you just mentioned freeze mage so ice lance is gone now so uh the you know the days of at least old school um old school freeze mage they're really just beating a dead horse with this one like freeze mage (laughs) has been dead and they've nerfed it every single nerf along the way they just keep kicking it (laughs) <laughs> they want to make sure it stays dead. It came back that one time. They made some nerfs, and like Freeze Mage still stuck around after them. And now they're just making sure. They've, I can imagine they've double tapped. You sure you're dead? It. They're just really firing a couple done. more rounds into the body. Yeah, <laughs> they've reloaded and came back a second time. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Dude, they but, went full Rambo on this guy. I can imagine the discussion. They're like, like Ben Bros at home, just sipping a, like a din- like a glass of wine with his wife. You know, the kids are asleep, and then he gets a phone call. You know, like. Bro, Freeze Major appeared in the tournament again, and then he just <laughs> fucking goes, are you yeah. fucking kidding me right now? What the fuck is it going to take next morning? Flurry at the fucking office, everybody's trying to come up with solutions, and somebody <laughs> comes up and like, fuck Icelands. And Bro looks at him like, you're, you're promoted, dude. Fuck it. And they're nerfing it now, and this is exactly what we're getting. I can imagine the scene. Like, it's so melodramatic. Well, what does Freeze Mage have now? They got like, Ice Block, and that's nothing. it? They have Ice Block, exactly. they've got Torch... <laughs> <laughs> That's not a freeze, really. They, they <laughs> yeah. lost Emperor. They got like ice box. Does it really freeze Alex. anymore? <laughs> I'll, I'll say something with Mage. Like, I think freeze is a super cool mechanic, but I think yeah. it's actually being held back by cards like Ice Lance, which translates uh, yeah. like, to ex- execute, make... basically. Yeah. Right. Like, you want to add more freeze effects, maybe, to the game uh, that are more punctual, and having Ice Lance into it might be too much. And also, mm-hmm. one of the things that sucks about Mage is how often you tend to gravitate towards let's kill people. Like, you never consider... That's the idea. Yeah, that's the, the class. class. Right, right. That's that is the class. Mage. Right, but... You don't need another deck just... that plays minions and trades. No more Joe and Yeti trading. I agree, I agree. But, like, let's let's look at something like the, the secret mage they're trying to push. Okay. Uh, like, that's an archetype that I think could be explored, but you don't have to go all in on the theme like they've done before. I'd like to see more mixed and match, like mix and match type decks, where, like, tempo mage, right? It's tried to be a little bit of board, a little bit of burst. Uh, and when you have Tempo Mage, like, sprinkling in Ice Lines, like, that shit gets really old. Like, you end up with some degenerate bullshit coming up. And I think that's mm. just what they're trying to prevent. You're allowed to be, like, hybridizing between styles, but you're not going to burst somebody in the face for 25. I, yeah, I know what you mean by that. And Te- Tempo Mage doesn't play Ice Lance, though. I know. The only guy that plays Ice Lance ver- was Freeze Mage. The version that doesn't it, exist anymore. So some people they're getting did. rid of Ice Lance for some future stuff, I guess, because mm-hmm. they want to print more burned cards. They yeah, are different. for sure. They are going to be printing more burn. There's no way they don't with the change yeah. to Ice Lance. And they don't want it to be like this this deck where you play a few minions. Not like Freeze Mage, like with Ice Block. You play a few minions, like Aggro Freeze, right? Like that was Maybe. fucking AIDS. Like when that yeah, deck but it was works, never good. It's like a T3 deck. But if they, they're printing tools for it, that deck is absolute AIDS. Like, it is beyond frustrating to play. Like maybe, it is. Maybe, I, I, maybe. Think it's, I think it's interesting. I think it's a different play style. I want to be able to play the game in as many different ways as possible. That's, maybe. maybe. Like, I play the game a lot. So if yeah. I'm able to play it in eight different play styles, that's amazing. When I go into Hearthstone right now, I feel like there's three different play styles. I'm either playing a Jade deck, and I'm just ramping Jade crap up as, you know, Druid or Shaman. Or I'm playing a Reno deck, and I'm just going for the value game and playing Reno Jackson 46% of the time. Or I'm playing right, an aggro right. deck, and I'm jamming pirates and trying to kill people. And those are the three ways I feel like I can play Hearthstone currently. And yeah, we have nine classes, and case, I feel like I can but... play the game three different ways. That's a design failure in my eyes. It I think we should have definitely right more ways to play nine classes than three. I mean, I mean it, you're... Go ahead. I played like aggro freeze mage nonstop when it was around. Like that's the one of the few mage decks that I actually love. But that deck, if it's too good ever, I think Ice Lance is one of the few reasons because the amount of burn mage has otherwise is kind of fair. Like Frostbolt, Fireball, uh, Torch to an extent, even though that's getting rotated out. But if they're replacing Torch with something else, and they're and, like, let's assume it's better than Torch, right? Like in some ways, like three mana deal four, whatever, whatever the fuck that is. Um, like that could be. 
really problematic for like if you keep ice lance around because suddenly the amount of burn you can put together with very few pieces that are like replaceable or interchangeable is is too much yeah well i hope they have to burn i hope mage gets to still be burn oriented oh sure and i, I hope oh, that place it still will be exists There's... in some fashion it better be as long as fireball yeah. <laughs> exists in class basic it's uh, sure. i think it's always gonna have to be some type of burn maybe another thing too is maybe they have some I don't know, maybe some minions or some cards like the, was it the Dementor? You know, like the 2-4 that actually freezes random guys. I, maybe yeah, they're... Cost cost four mana. It mana. Uh, uh, maybe they're... three. I don't know. How did that one pan out? <laughs> <laughs> this one freezes them and costs four. Flame Waker kills them no and costs idea. three. Was it? Is well, it four? I thought it was three, too. Oh, my gosh. If it's four, it's then four. that doesn't it's, make any uh, sense. Yeah, yeah so may, I don't know. Maybe they, that's a reason for taking this, like, specific one. But then you're adding RNG to that, so it's just kind of like... Uh, I don't know. It's 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 gonna be kind of sad, but again, this is another card that's been around forever too. So um, yeah, just some, hopefully something new will be replace it and it'll be good. And then lastly, conceal. So we we yeah. talked about rogue. We, we we hinted at how important conceal is already for auctioneer. Um, this is a card that's defined rogue for a long time now. So you guys sad. I mean, are, are you sad about well, this card disappearing, or are you just more sad that Rogue's just going to be in a crap state, potentially? I think if we really wanted to remove the most cancerous part of Rogue right now, we would look to Edwin Van Cleef instead yeah. of Conceal, but I think this is a close runner-up for the most cancerous <laughs> part of Rogue. Yeah. So, like, Rogue is already the most inconsistent deck in the game and just randomly kills you for no reason doing unfair bullcrap. And I don't know why that exists and Freeze Mage had to die, but, you know, here we are. And I think removing Conceal helps with that. I just don't know what Rogue's going to do now. So yeah. Rogue is, I think, after seeing all of the stuff that's rotating out, the worst class and they need to do something to help it with this next release. If they don't, Rogue is going to suck, because it currently does nothing. It's got no good early game, it's got no good mid game, it's got no good late game. It just, it is worse than Hunter. Yeah, it is really, like, if after we take those changes out, of course, like, that, it's that's... It's got Edwin still, I guess. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can always get that 8-8 eight, eight okay, Edwin right. on it turn You can always, three. like, 30% your way to an obliteration. <laughs> yeah, it's either, like, Edwin or just, like, aggro rogue with cold bloods and hope they don't have an answer and you just that's jam it. things at their that, face yeah that's what i don't want like i don't want rogue to become like just another aggro deck or you know play tempo with cold blood as finisher because it'd be like they already do that it's just like we have too many tempo decks why yeah. do we need four well they have so, like again they have so many value centric cards in their in their arsenal like the the, too, the actual rogue um the variety in the cards are is actually not that bad they're, they're just not synergized at all in, in a way so the they, cards that you keep saying are value cards though i say are just bad like <laughs> there's a line where you can go between value and bad and like thistle tea and burgle are are way deep in the bad side like yeah. and uh true true i mean i i agree with that like, but if, if for some reason they could get more health i mean just like throwing stuff out there right if they could get more health they could survive a lot longer then maybe, you know, like, maybe they could just stealth their hero one turn and just survive, and then they actually get a free turn to, to do something, or they can remove the board in a big way. I don't know, just something that, that makes sense for them to actually add these cards, like Gang Up and Thistle T and all these things. It's like, otherwise, you literally have, a, like, 15, car 10 cards I mean, that, you know that are all see. along I'll, those lines. I want them to let rogues reorder their fucking deck. I want that to be the fucking theme of Rogue. I but want we order it? Rogues dig through their fucking deck and like decide. Rogue should be the combo deck. There should be some sort of cool combo. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Like, like, we need a class that plays out with combos. We can't have every single class be a tempo deck. You Let know what? Rogue I want a one meta cool. weapon. I, I want a one meta one two weapon for Rogue that that says your combos are always enabled or some shit. Like, I don't, I don't care what it combo is. Combo sucks, dude. There's like SI7 and that's it. Yeah, but they can print more is the point. Like, they can okay. really make a whole lot. Like, because they could make actual combo cards that work early game that aren't garbage. They need to do um, a lot to Rogue to really recover the current state of it. So Yeah, I agree. I think I... I it's too fast. The game's too fast right now. The game's just, like, yeah. so fast that, you know, like, Shadow Step used to be an amazing card for Rogue way back when, right? Now it's, I mean, it's light years too slow, you know, for, for us to use. And, and that's crazy because that used to be such a... You know, a big part of playing Rogue too. So I think Rogue's just going to become 
another aggro deck like Shaman and Warrior and just be focused uh, around Pirates I, and going face. I think they might actually add synergy for bouncing. Like, whenever a card returns to your... Like, something when X returns to your hand. Because they, they, they printed the new 2-drop that does it. Um, mm -hmm. There's still Shadow Step in the in the class, and they have the uh, the use. Bouncing is a cool mechanic. I, I, I think a lot bouncing is a lot of like that has. It's no, but isn't that value, guys? Control. I mean, what are we talking yeah, yeah, about it's here? Value. God, it's value. It's value. Sure. Bouncing is value lines that are going to lose you the game. But if they have some way to transfer yeah. that value back into tempo, like some sort battle of battle cry, uh, crazy battle like, cries, yeah. It, either some sort of like, well, it needs to be some sort of sweeper or something yeah. like that, that, or some sort of like. Thing from below, but for bouncing things back like, instead of playing totems. But like, that'd be really lazy because they've done that before. Imagine but, you know, some sort of AOE that gets charged up the more you bounce things back or whatnot. Yeah. That's what I'd like to see, like a 10 cost sweeper that reduces in cost whenever something's bounced, like minus yeah. two mana for something, and then you just get the fucking clean up, like clean up house. Yeah, uh, that'd and be that, cool. Like that's the that's the kind of mechanic I'd like rogues to get. Like there are so many things they can do because the thing is the mechanics are there; they're just not used. And they're interesting. I mean, they actually have interesting well, cards, but right. And they're just what's not super strong. weird is like every single set we they like drip new cards for an archetype. They go like V's Druid. Let's you know drip a card. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay, drip another card. Okay, drip a really good card. Oh, it still doesn't work. All right, next expansion. I'm telling you, V's Druid is cancer. So now we just have to figure out. Um, like oh, Beast Druid's coming. Gonna do with <laughs> it's Pop. coming yeah. big. It's coming in a big way, too. Beast Druid's just another tempo deck. I know, but you know it's coming. Different it's a freaking type. dinosaur <laughs> release had, coming. We've had, like, pirates. We've had dragons. We've had, you know, just <laughs> mid-range druid. We've had mid-range shaman. And they've all been generic tempo decks where you play minions on curve. And why is that the play style we push in every class? Now we're pushing Beast Druid. Like... I, I'm losing my mind, man. I want a tempo, yeah. tempo taunt warrior so we can have no. fun in warrior two. <laughs> no, you don't, they're, they're pushing that too, aren't they? Protect yeah. the king, yeah, they please. They're pushing let tempo me play warrior it. with taunts too. Like, why? <laughs> why can't we play the game in different dimensions? Why is? Why well, they they kept that one bad though. Something? At least <laughs> they kept that one. Well, I mean, really they're dripping bad. cards in one at a time until. Yeah. They did the same thing with shaman. Shaman was bad originally. You, you know, rem remember way back when shaman was bad. And, Even uh, when they had Trog and Totem Golem, they, they were bad. cards one at a time, and then bam, really good tempo deck. Yeah. And they're doing the same thing with Beast Druid. They're doing the same thing with Taunt Warrior. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's coming, I, dude. I'm telling you what, like, prepare. The I, Beast Druid is coming, dude. Like, dinosaurs will literally tear you a new one. If okay, tempo so, decks are so, tier one, the next two metas in a row, man. I, I, I get a prediction. Know. What will be the powerful control deck? If there even is one. <laughs> even, if there, even if there is one. What will powerful it be? Control deck. Will there be a powerful control deck? Uh, well, technically, I mean, Paladin can fuck everyone, but Eadric is getting rotated out. Like, if the tempo slows down, if we're talking mid range tempo, the like the, all those enough. stat yeah. modifiers. I yeah, don't like, think Eadric is going anywhere, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, pirates. Be... I mean, are we talking about like the post rotation thing? Because I think that's yeah. where they'd like to take the game. Is like a little bit slower towards the mid range. Yeah, post rotation. We're talking post rotation. What will be the control deck? Because everybody's like, oh, you know, maybe Kazakus and Breeze, you know, no Reno. They still got greater healing. Well, they lose a lot of their dragon and operatives. Going to be garbage. You know, and like Breeze in Breeze. is just tier four right it, now. It, like, it, Reno it, Breeze is really bad. It's going to be even oh. worse though. So like, yeah, okay, it's... so that's not that's out of the question. Reno lock. I mean, it, it all depends what they print, right? Like, yeah. It, one of the issues with control decks currently is there is very few control decks that can either pressure or get above thirty health. And if you're going to be a control deck in a card game, then you need to be able to either get above thirty health or be able to pressure. Otherwise, decks are going to like two turn you or you know one turn you. Like that's yeah. just going to happen. Like they will find a way to be able to do that. So maybe that's like, why they I, want to take out warrior, combo. Like. Yeah. Warrior is going to be the only deck that can actually have the tools to sustain a control archetype because you need to be able to prevent yourself from getting one shotted. You need to be able to prevent yourself from getting two turned, and you need to be able to deal with aggro. And Warrior can deal with those three things. Warrior has single target died removal, in... it's got AOE removal, and it's got heal. And none of the other decks have that unless they get tools extra printed to them. So I think Warrior is the most likely. And the Warrior is just so yeah. susceptible to Druid Jade, though. It's just yeah, like Warrior, ridiculous. Well, any control deck. Yeah. Can't beat Jade. What are you talking? Like none of the control decks can beat Jade, and that's just a mechanic that's going to persist know, and stop uh, control for a year to come. 
what, what kind of irks me is they mentioned, you know, we don't want to print more tri-class cars in the future. You know, the Jade theme is over. The Kazakhs theme is over. We're going to move on to a new, a new concept. They can't. Does that mean they're never printing a neutral fuck Jade card? You know, like reset. No, they'll goals print one. I hope they print that's one. What, that's what I'm saying, right? Like, if they're never interacting with that mechanic again, that shit is going to need either power creep to beat it or just well, like more yeah. aggro. I mean, that's it. right now. You cannot out control jades. One yeah. of the ways you can out control jades is if you have a burst combo to finish. Burst combo, yeah. Well, exactly. we just nerfed all the burst cards. We removed them from the game. We just went through that. And we saw that the ways you could do that was conceal, ice lance combos, and power only combos. Oh shit! There, there's all three of those. So those are gone. <laughs> so now the only way you can beat jades is by rushing them down. You can't yeah. beat them with a control deck any longer. They've they're really at this point neutering control from the game. Now if they want to. You know, introduce new cards and that then, yeah, and combo and combo. control and combo are just gone right now because of these cards leaving and Jade existing. That's so incredible. now they really need to introduce some new cards, otherwise, control is really screwed right now. No, yeah, they seem fucked anyway. I think we're gonna have a, like a metagame of mid rangey stuff. I mean, one of the things too is awesome. like, even if it, it's, it's mid range versus aggro, dude, that's gonna be the it's gonna be the same cycle it is right now. Currently, the rock, paper, scissors is there's the control decks that are like the Reno decks that beat up on the aggro decks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Farbass yeah. frozen. He got he, he raged so hard it just froze. He raged so hard he just got frozen. Yeah. He's got a point but, um, though. He's got he does got a point that like the the control decks actually disappearing. That's gonna be sad. I, I really, really hope that, that these you know what what's crazy is that, you know, whenever you're trying to to fill holes, fill gaps in some of these classes, you're just making the other classes potentially just better, unless you're just better, giving them yeah. nothing. Like if Shaman literally gets garbage, which you know they might have tried to do this, you know this last release, Please but no. they still got some cool stuff. You know, and obviously Jade was was definitely in line with what the power cards were, anyways, for this. Um, well, we're gonna have to <laughs> figure this out in a second, but um, yeah, it's it's gonna be still potentially off balance because <laughs> oh god, so yeah, we just got a lost fire bat, so uh, that's gonna be. I don't know if he's gonna be back or not. We'll have to see. He's obviously having some internet issues, but <laughs> let me fix this at least. Let me fix your cam at least, <laughs> and then we'll we'll get back to. <laughs> adding fire bat back to this. This is not fun. Smilestone, dude. This is totally. This is not Smilestone. I'm having fun anyway. Okay, let me let me fix this real quick. But yeah, so overall, you know, I think that you know we are generally happy about the changes. You know, like I'm I'm glad yeah. that they're they're removing some long standing cards because we just want some change in Hearthstone. And uh, hold on, let me do this real quick. Hey, hey, I'm trying to fix this real quick so we can show us at least without Firebat here. Uh, but yeah, so we're, we're happy that they, they decide, you know, they're, they're cha changing, this, making some changes that seem to be in the right direction. But man, I, I hope these cards are just amazing cards and they slowly try to get the class balance back to, to some, somewhat I mean, of some parity because right now it's going to be hard. Because yeah. like we we started this this show being like okay there's gonna be a twenty minute discussion on the new changes it's, it's like, like an hour this is an now we're balanced bitching exactly. like it's pretty much back to because like these changes again like the nerves that are happening like they're big but they're not big because I think a lot of people right now are recognizing that a lot of the issues are like underpinnings of design philosophy and if those don't change then you know you can change the the mask on the card but it's still the same fucking effect it's still an aggro card it's still like a mid-range card it, you can change the face of the hero but it's still a mid-range deck it's still a curve stone deck and that can lead to very stale meta so i think at this point like when we see those changes we're all excited and all for you know news but in the very long term what we're looking for is well you know the next expansion and probably the first this is like the first real standard year this is going to be where hearthstone is like this future is determined this should be like the last year of growing pains i think for hearthstone i think this is going to be this last year of growing pains after which we know for sure what standard is going to be like how fast they have to iterate and how fast they have to patch because that's one of the big things um like if standard is supposed to fix things you know they're, they could simply figure out a new release cycle for patches and then suddenly yeah. the problems uh, get solved faster yeah i i predict 
that hey you back yeah <laughs> all right you just raged you, were, you, you raged you and like broke the internet dude camera, I guess. I don't know. okay i need it yeah. you're getting heated <laughs> yeah well we we're just talking about what i guess um what uh, noxious is thinking that this is the the last well we should be this is like the first year where we're we should be past growing pains and in and, and whatnot i Still actually fast. we are in growing we're pains. in growing pains so, okay okay yeah i think hmm. i think in some ways this year will be like what last year sh should have been like in, yeah. in my eyes yeah and, and maybe we're saying the same thing but i think they'll start you know not not only just trying to adjust and like just be chasing you know just just from behind the entire year and things like that i think they'll actually be able to make some macro changes for you know the the future ability to you know like, like things like the client change you know they're finally getting a chance sure. to do that they should have done that last year right. you know let's just be I've honest been, right it, you know they've made very positive changes i already said this earlier on it's the the speed that everyone's concerned about but you know all of the moves they've made for the most part, everyone's been happy about. It's just all about yeah. the speed. So, like, you know, they're getting the hang of it. I, as much as I've ranted about, you know, the cards and the decks and aggro and all of this stuff, at the end of the day, I still got to say, hey, you know, they're doing the right things. They're just doing it not as fast as I want them to do it. So I think they'll get it eventually. Pretty much. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. By the end of the year, I predict by the end of 2017, we'll have a faster... I think we'll have fast, more frequent, the, the uh, much shorter frequency between balance changes. That's that's why my prediction I, is. That's exactly what I predict, yeah. and I think this is again, this is the last year of Hearthstone uh, figuring itself out, and then it knows what it needs to be because this is where like everything is going to be made or broken because the release cycle is novel, and then on the following year we'll have like try some experimentation probably we'll, again. We'll start um, possibly getting features that we've been asking yeah. for. This year, I don't think we'll get any new features. Like, yeah, no tournament mode, you know, none of that stuff. I, I don't think we'll get... We're just going to, ha like, try to... I think they're going to try to hash out all the things that they currently have and try to get them as, you know, efficient and just, you know, just, just in, in a fashion that at least the community will be be happier about. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'll be happy... I'll be cool with that. You know, I don't, I don't need some of those things like right away, but I definitely need yeah. those improvements to what's currently out there like in a, in a very quick way. So I'll, um, um, I'll, I'll close out the show by yeah. mentioning that may shadow song is another fucking elf. And I can't, I, why Wait, elves? Wh what? Weird. Why is my shadow song? The, the, the portraits. New... Yeah. Why yeah, is there another is. elf? Well, elves are hot. Oh, that's right. Oh, we, we forgot to even talk about like the whole, uh, you know, we're just just destroying rogues. So they they give you a skin. Itself. They give you yeah. a skin by just like removing <laughs> any kind of viable rogues. Remember we were talking about that. But sure. uh, okay, oh, this is an elf. Okay, rogue. I didn't even realize that was an elf. Yeah, know, her name is Maya Shadow Song. Okay, it's got to be an elf. You're right. <laughs> yeah, she's the Illidan's. Ne she Ill she's actually El Illidan's nemesis. Yeah. So maybe we see Illidan come back in Secrets of Ungoro. Like they they unearth him from under whatever the fuck. <laughs> yeah, dude. Warden. We need more. Fun. We just need more skins, man. I, I think more skins would be more fun. A bait to get people to buy skins, right? So they give you, they nerf Rogue to hell. They make Rogue absolute garbage. <laughs> so you then never see you it. Free skin. You never so see you, it. You have this free skin. You're like, this is so cool, but Rogue sucks. But I really like this skin. Maybe I'll buy a skin for another class that's actually playable. It's it's a marketing bait, dude. Oh, you get getting scammed yeah. right here. I, I Honestly, like Honestly, Skamaz is probably just on their team setting this up. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Yeah. oh Dude. man oh that's awesome that's awesome all right guys well i think we're gonna wrap it up this was yeah longer than expected but it's i guess it's to be expected that we were going to talk about some some balanced things too but um yeah just there's a bonus episode for you guys all the patrons who you know i'll be putting it on there don't worry this doesn't count towards the you know the the page uh, the patron for per episode so uh it's a freebie but want to thank firebat for dropping in i know he just he just got back literally from trinity guys so uh you know i really appreciate you coming and joining the discussion thanks a lot man yeah, yeah thanks for having me it was fun a lot of uh heated discussion <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely noxious of course thanks for uh doing the show and because i know that you've got kids that you are sleeping right now i've got kids knocking on my door to put them to bed so uh i think we we pretty much have to finish now. <laughs> so, thanks a lot, man. Pleasure.
All right, guys. Well, and for those of you that are tuning in, thanks for watching. I know we didn't give you much notice, so, um, you know, Hopefully you were able to catch a bunch of it. If you don't, I'll put it up on YouTube, youtube.com slash chamb tomorrow. And then, yeah, you can just check it out. Uh, also, I'll put it on iTunes too for all the audio folks if you did miss it. But until then, that's going to be it for us today. And we'll see you uh, next Wednesday for the normal Value Talent Show. Until then, see ya. Peace. Peace.